right, so uh, here we are. Um, this is Ian Hart, uh, co-creator of Back Pain Relief for Life, and I'm here with Dr. Stuart McGill. He is the professor of spine mechanics at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada, and he's one of the most sought-after experts and consultants and author for Back Pain Relief Performance, and his books and DVDs can be found at backfitpro.com. And welcome and thank you, Dr. McGill. Yeah, thank you, Ian. All right, so there's a few questions I want to ask, and a lot of, a lot of these questions are pertaining to uh, everyday questions I get from clients and also fitness professionals. Um, <clears throat> but I think the first thing is why is back pain such a monstrous epidemic uh, nowadays, and is it more is the spine more vulnerable today than it say 40 years ago? <laughs> Starting with the easy questions first. <laughs> exactly. I don't know the answer to that, Ian. Um, okay. However, uh, if we go back even into the ancient uh, Roman scrolls and Egyptian art, we see pictures of people uh, expressing their back pain and and uh, trying different. Uh, mechanical postures and movements to uh, deal with it. Um, so it's not something new, that's for sure. However, <clears throat> uh, I think with the advent of uh, the personal computer and how people's jobs have changed so radically, I know even my role as a professor has changed radically over the years where virtually everything I do from an administrative point of view through to teaching is done via computer. Right. And we're all sitting much more and longer. And some of us elect to uh, engage in fitness programs because of this generally uh, general sedentary lifestyle. And uh, we go very hard in that one hour training session and then for the other 23 hours we're quite sedentary and that regimen in of itself is uh, problematic so that sitting down all day is it could potentially lead to um, people's backs getting worse throughout their life as they sit down at desks yeah there's no question yep sitting for a long period of time is uh, quite stressful for the back for quite a number of reasons. Okay, and you also brought up about people engaging in an exercise program. Um, now, a lot of people are scared when they have back pain to engage in exercise, and sometimes they just don't do anything because of the pain in their back. Um, when is it appropriate to exercise? Which exercises should, uh, and obviously this can be a complicated question, but in general, which exercises should people stay away from um, and what exercises will help strengthen the lower back, core, etc.? Okay. Um, well, uh, that, I'm, I'm just going to clarify a few things there because you started the question out talking uh, referring to back pain, which is a generic uh, malady, shall we say. Right. And uh, here's the thing. There is no uh, good instruction for someone with back pain on what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Uh, it's very much dependent on the person. So right. uh, if we go back to more general principles, uh, we could say avoid the mechanical cause of your back pain. So people, um, when they think about it, uh, in terms of motions, postures, and loads, they should be able to identify motions, postures, and loads that exacerbate or make their pain worse. They should also be able to identify motions, postures, and loads that are tolerable. Um, so the the exercises that they should do are the ones that are tolerable but address their deficits, and the ones they should avoid are the ones that make their pain worse. Um, so that, that, that's the answer from a generic point of view. But if we're going to get specific, um, we would have to use examples of specific categories of back pain. So let's take a 30-year-old 
uh, person who works in an office, but they're quite keen to maintain their fitness and appearance and that sort of thing. So once a day, they go to the gym and have a, a good training session. Um, it probably bothers them that the slob who sits beside them at work, who never trains or works out, never complains about back pain. Right. And he, here's, here's the funny paradox that, that is quite unique to backs. Um, the, the pain in that 30-year-old office worker is most probably discogenic pain, pain from the disc. Pains in other periods of the life cycle come from different uh, tissues and different mechanisms, but that that's, would be a good generalism to characterize uh, that type of person. Um, the person who never trains or works out never builds up any cumulative uh, trauma or more specifically delamination in the discs of their back. So they remain pain free. But then again, their work capacity is very low. They couldn't go out and, and uh, you know, go for a run or a lifting session or whatever. They just couldn't take it. However, the person who does train and they train uh, probably with too much of a flexion bias, uh, you know, too many sit-ups and too many uh, we could say uh, full motion crunches, et cetera, maybe too much stretching, they start the delamination process in their, in their discs so that when they go back to work and sit for a few hours, that becomes a very painful enterprise. Um, if they didn't work out, uh, they would probably have less pain. So that's the craziness of all of this. But I'm certainly right. not advocating don't train. Uh, quite the opposite. It's the way that you train um, so that you don't build up cumulative stress in any one area of the body. And, and keeping that in balance is, is one of the key principles to reducing not only back pain, but pain throughout your body. Great. 